Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, I am Cleo Andrus. I am an assistant professor here at Georgia Tech in urban planning and interactive computing, and I'm so thrilled to welcome you all today. Um, I know this is a very busy time of year, and I appreciate all of the presenters and all of the participants who are with us today. I'd also like to thank the College of Design for sponsoring this event. Uh, and a huge thanks to the people who are contributing content today, um, the presenters, and many of them today are volunteers. So we want to thank you for your time. And a special thanks to Yasmin Khorashahi for being a great co-organizer. want to thank you very much. All right, I'll just say two words on points of interest. Uh, giant data sets on points of interest were first very important for web mapping and mobile application development in the digital, uh, digital points of interest, that is. And as we have been able to integrate them more into GIS, they are becoming extremely crucial data for quality of life, access to resources, social life, and opportunity. So today we have four exciting lightning talks and a great list of 11 speakers who are working on the cutting edge of POI research. I'm also excited to announce that in conjunction with the POI symposium, we have an exciting special issue of the new journal Computational Urban Science, and you'll be receiving information about that special <laughs> issue in conjunction with the symposium in our future emails and in the discussion that we will be having later today around uh, 3 Eastern time. Speaking of Eastern time, I would like to thank uh, many of you who are on different time zones, especially those who are on the West Coast, especially those in Asia. I know that we have at least one person here who is visiting us um, from Asia, and we just, our hat really goes off to you. And we hope that your Friday night is going well, and we also hope to have a happy Friday night tonight. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start our four lightning talks. And the first lightning talk we have is by Solha Lee, who is graduating with her Master's of City and Regional Planning from Georgia Tech this month, and will be joining UC Irvine for a PhD program starting in the fall. Solha, take it away. Yep, thank you for the introduction, Cleo. Um, hi, everyone. It's really nice to good to see you today. Um, I'm going to present um, our research study about estimating diversity at points of interest in Atlanta, Georgia using origin destination trip data. Oops. Residential segregation is perpetuating in our city, leading us to consistent disinvestment and inequality in education, public health, and other opportunities. But how about other locations like jobs and third places? Researchers found that not only residential locations, but also our activity spaces are segregated. Um, interest in activity space segregation has been growing with concerns in unequal access to amenities and services and the lack of diversity in highly consumeristic urban places, which give unwelcoming and alienating feelings. Next, please. Thus, to understand the activity space segregation better, we ask two research questions in this research. First, we ask which kinds of POI by neighborhood location and by category have a more diverse set of visitors in Atlanta. And second, we asked about any difference in trips visiting the POIs across different race and income level. The data we used is the trip data provided by SafeGraph, a private spatial activity data company. They provided OD trip data of aggregated trips from each census block group to POIs in each month. For each OD pair, we've got a number of trips data visiting and types of POI in NICE code. There were total around 6,500 POIs in our data set with food places and retail places taking the biggest share. For income and race composition in each census block group, we used ACS data. Next, please. Um, to measure the visiting population diversity, we used the proportion and number of visitors from neighborhoods of varying racial compositions and median annual income composition. Once we estimated the race of income composition of visitors at each POI um, using the residential composition data um, from ACS, 
We calculated the um, place racial and income diversity based on how the distribution was skewed toward a particular race or income group compared to the average in the site in the city. So um, the diagram on the slide shows a very simple and conceptual um, explanation about our method. Next, please. So after the calculation for the analysis, we mapped the POIs with their place diversity. You are seeing the map of place racial diversity on the right. The lower the place diversity value is, the more diverse the visitor population was at the place. And the underlying core plus map shows percentage of white population. You can see that highest diversity is aligned um, with the line of residential segregation in the city. We also found that POIs in the downtown area, in nearby Midtown, um, the part centered uh, in the map, and in adjacent um, gentrifying neighborhoods have a more diverse set of POI visitors. Next, please. For income, the pattern was similar. And for both income and race, we found that POIs in the majority white or higher, higher income neighborhoods tends to be more diverse than in the opposite social settings. Next, please. And lastly, when it comes to the type of POIs, we first found that food outlets have the most diverse visiting population in race and income. But food outlets with recreational locations were also visited more often by the people from majority white or higher income neighborhoods. Lastly, we found that people in majority black or lower income neighborhoods were more likely to visit the places in the opposite socioeconomic setting of theirs. theirs. Um, so we hope this research to contribute to understand how POI serve as potential mixing areas in the city and to serve urban residents more equitably with amenities and services. And we are also planning to perform similar analysis across multiple cities with more um, range of racial groups and ethnicities. Thank you for listening. This is the end of my talk. Our next speaker is Florina Dutt, who is uh, in her final year of her PhD, and she will be graduating very soon with an exciting dissertation incorporating social media data sets into uh, a better understanding of stress in the built environment. Florina has been at Georgia Tech for quite a while, and she will be on to some interesting endeavors after she graduates. All right, Florina, take it away. Hi, so I will be presenting uh, a topic of uh, tweets and POI diversity in Atlanta. Next. So this is a part of a larger study looking at tweets to understand where people stress and de-stress. So the psychology and mental health literature points out, although there is the greater accessibility to facilities like green spaces reduce stress level, a mixed land use or diverse land use is sometimes associated with higher levels of stress. So our next, please. Yeah, so the new studies, however, uh, and other urban design studies shows that POI density and diversity increases complexity of built environment and has a positive impact on neighborhood vibrancy. Next. So we were looking at these two research questions. Where are people in Atlanta tweeting with respect to the POI? And if there is a pattern in the occurrence of these stressed and the stress tweets with respect to the POI. Next. So we use the safe graph uh, point of interest data as well as Google uh, Places API data to make the data set more exhaustive. And this is the map showing the different POIs that we have used in the study. Next. So we had more than 150 different categories when we combined the different data set and also looked at the safe prop data set uh, for the POI. And this is a map showing that how diverse the POI uh, are in Atlanta. Next. So, and this is the map of uh, stress tweets and the de-stress tweets in Atlanta. It's the tweet between uh, April 2018 and March 2020, two years worth of tweet, but it's uh, a time before the COVID period. And almost 10% of the geolocated tweets are stressed in this category. Next. So we did a recategorization of the POI dataset 
found the distribution of POI within a threshold of one mile distance for each tweet. And then we tried to calculate the diversity of the POI around the tweets to give us more information. Next. So this is a map showing the POI is being recategorized. The categorization was done uh, from the built environment and mental health literature categories that it pointed to. And then next. And this is a map just showing the uh, distribution of these stress tweets. And we uh, next. And we looked at uh, one mile buffer for each of these tweets. And this is just an example how we calculated the diversity. And uh, the diagram shows POI within one mile of a de-stress tweet. So you can see the tweet text and the POI diversity around that uh, tweet. Next, please. So these are some of uh, preliminary results of the map showing distribution of different types of POI within one mile of uh, distressed tweets. And if you see one of the darkest point, it shows that the most number of POIs that it has of a different category. Next. So uh, this map shows the measure of diversity within one mile of the distressed tweets. And we see that high density clusters of distressed tweets are seen in areas with greater diversity of POI. Next. So in answering some of the research question, which we asked before, we find that more uh, people tweet in areas with greater diversity of POI. We find higher density of distressing tweets found in areas with high POI diversity. Although there is less proportion of stress tweets in areas with high POI diversity, we did not find any significant relationship between the stress levels of tweets and POI diversity within its one mile. Next. So the study is at this moment ongoing and uh, I'm assessing the stress levels of tweets and the relationship to POI for less than one mile radius and with more control variables. And the assess we are also further going to assess the tweet topics and cause of stress in areas with diverse POI versus areas with less diverse POI. So these are some of my ideas for future. I would love to get your feedback and this is end of my talk. Our next speaker is Xiao Fan Liang, who is a uh, city and regional planning PhD candidate. And she is actually my first PhD student here at Georgia Tech. Uh, very happy to have her. And her background is in sociology and computer science. And she will be presenting about uh, chain, the chainness value in restaurants. So Xiao Fan, take it away. Thanks, Cleo, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to present you my research with Dr. Cleo and- Shelfan, do you mind speaking up just a little bit more here? Can you hear me? Um, yep. Okay, thanks Cleo for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I am here to present you my research with Dr. Cleo Andres on measuring max city landscapes of chain and independent restaurants in the United States. The restaurants are an important class of POI in our landscape. So think about these two neighborhoods below that feature a different food culture. So one features chains while the other favors independent restaurants. So which of these neighborhoods would you like to live in? So we acknowledge that independent restaurants are central for a place to express and cultivate its identity. In contrast, chains are connected to the concept of replicable landscape or placelessness. Plenty of research has mourned the decline of classic American main streets which are lost in suburbanization and standardized culture produced by global corporations. Therefore, the motivation of our research is to add a chain of attributes to restaurants to show which of them are operated by big names while others are operated in the mom and pop style. For our research question, we asked which types of places have independent food culture and which are Mac City. So a Mac City is a place where the same food can be found in many other and often distant places. We used 800,000 restaurant record from Yellow Pages for the contiguous United States collected in 2017. In terms of the method, we defined four chains matrix and used random forest model and linear regression to examine what social demographic variables are associated with chainness. So these are the four matrix we use to measure chainness of the restaurants. So the first one, FN, is used to measure the number of outlets for a restaurant brand in US derived from the common restaurant name. 
So GN is a binary measure to assign a restaurant to be chain if it has more than five outlets. So DANN measures the average distance to the next outlet. Or DSS measures the distance of spatial span, so which is the geographic coverage of a brand. So in order of the rows in the table, we can see example of restaurants from being independent on the top to the most chain brand in the US at the bottom. We want to stress that these matrix can be applied to other POIs, such as hotels and retail stores, to measure their chains as well. This map shows the chains of urban areas in the United States, measured by the average percentage of restaurants being chained in the spatial units. We can see that cities most subjective to chains are mostly in the Midwest and Southeast US, while coastal cities on the West and East Coast tend to have more independent restaurants. To explore what social demographic variables are associated with the chainness of a place, we ran random forest models on both point and census tract level. The important scores and partial dependence plots from the random forest model highlighted four variables that are more important of predicting chainness of a restaurant at a, and a place. Overall, higher walk score, population density, and medium household income, as well as less Trump voters, are likely to predict low chainness. We also examined how chainness is associated with the built environment at the point level. We found that restaurants closer to the water bodies and coastline and further away from highways are more likely to have lower chainness. In conclusion, we summarized landscape characteristics that are more conducive to chains and independent restaurants. We found that car dependent small towns, low walkability, a high percentage of African American residents or Trump voters, college towns, and nearness to highways are associated with chains. Chain restaurants are more prevalent in Midwestern and also Southeastern United States. Areas with high pedestrian walkability, population density, Asian, Hispanic, and majority white neighborhoods tourist area, areas with urban professional and urban communities, uh, retirement communities are associated with independent restaurants. These independent restaurants also favor coastal cities and waterfronts. So lastly, we would like to invite all of you to explore our online tool of restaurant chains on our lab website. We hope this tool can help people find and support local business. And thank you for listening. So our last speaker for our lightning talks is Gabriel Pia. Gabriel just finished his first year of his PhD here in, um, in the city School of City and Regional Planning. And we are really happy to have him as our fourth lightning talk. Gabriel, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Claude Andrews for uh, the introduction. Um, so I'm gonna talk about um, how do POI support relationships? So uh, we know that different POIs support um, different relationships. For instance, a zoo can be a good place where um, a parent can take um, their children to kind of bond together. And for that matter, it supports a uh, family relationship. Our research objectives, next please. Um, our research objectives is to annotate POI types with relationships that they support. Uh, next, inventory the success or failures of places to support these relationships. Next, please. And suggest uh, new POIs to build or POIs to save from demolition. Next, please. So um, this is a look at um, someone's social network. Um, so we can see that um, each of the um, nodes are one person and also um, they are linked to each other. Um, the colors are natural groupings, maybe this person. So this person has friends from uh, maybe a religious institution, um, from uh, maybe software, a softball team. And also um, this person also have family. And these relationships need um, place or they need point of interest to play out. Next, please. So um, this is um, a vision of one way to look at how it's building in a town supports relationships. Um, this is only example labels for real buildings in the town in Pennsylvania called Belfont. Um, for instance, um, in red, we have the Elks um, Lodge, American Legion, um, Veterans Club. All these are exclusive clubs. Um, they are important for relationships, but they are not open to all. 
uh, bed and breakfast and museum in yellow. Um, in yellow help uh, also um, support people who are traveling together. And those buildings in orange, such as um, YMCA church, waffle shop, are also good um, social relationships. Next, please. So um, we did a proof of concept um, by scraping some Twitter, Google reviews, and trip advisor data. Uh, and um, what we did was, um, you know, people post things like, my wife and I love golfing in Singapore, or went to um, escape room in Florida with my friend, or um, love visiting um, Denali National Park with my boyfriend. So when people post something like this, we um, take the POI type and the relationship type out of the post and count up the frequency here. Um, so um, here is a bar chart of the results. Next, please. So I think a previous slide, sorry, this. Okay. Keep your good to go to the last one. Okay, this is good. Next, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, the last one, um, so our final vision um, will include events. Um, we also want to show events that occur um, at HBY. Um, these are really important. Um, in the schematic, we have um, a focal neighborhood, and, and this neighborhood includes, um, so this is the um, um, fixed, uh, fictional neighborhood, and it includes um, bowling alley, um, country club, library, salon, city hall, and um, the events that occur there are kids, um, kids' birthday party, um, adult bowling league, disco bowling, singles night, and also um, fireworks show, barbecue, or even judicial trials. And uh, within these POIs, um, there can be relationship that these POIs support. And some of the relationship that um, this pure I can support can be new romantic relationship, child parent relationship, or even co workers relationship. So, um, the results uh, is that these are a great portfolio of relationships served. But if we add more, we want to create more places for couples, places that have country club activities, but not just for the worthy, but for all. Next, please. So, in conclusion, um, in conclusion, we want to find out how POI supports relationships and also thanks to Dr. Yuan and let us know if you want to be part of, um, if you're interested in working with our team. Thank you.